test to get my mortgage broker license. Oh, oh. Whoa. We got him as your driver's license. Wow. Yeah, yeah. All right. Any other happy dollars? All right. Uh, um, today, believe it or not, we're going to have a quiz. And the reason we're having a quiz is because today is National Winnie the Pooh Day. Now, You've all uh, been exposed, I think, to Winnie the Pooh. And so we're going to do a quiz in the old fashioned way. We're going to do it table by table. Here's the wrinkle. If you shout out an answer and it's not your table's turn, you will be fined $1 for everybody at your table. So that will exceed the three dollar limit, and since I'm the sergeant and I'm the treasurer, I'm lifting the three dollar limit for that reason. So you've got it. I'm a dictarian here. All right, Woo! here we go. Uh, first table. Oh wait a minute, I have to see where Bonnie Beth is. Bonnie Beth is back there. And uh, Bonnie Beth, you're excused from this uh, from this quiz because, as a librarian, you probably know the answer to every one of these questions. And so, I uh, might as well just exclude you because then we can collect from a lot more other people. Okay, so uh, the very first table is going to be uh, Darnell and and that group right back there. And this, in this, especially for you, Darnell, this is a two-part question. You've got to get both parts right. Okay. Who wrote the book Winnie the Pooh? Yeah, and the first part you got right too. It was A A. So the second part of this uh, of this uh, Question is, what does the AA stand for? That's not fair. <laughs> I didn't hear your wrong answer. What was it? That's not fair. <laughs> Aloysius Alexander. Uh, half right, but you still had to put in uh, $3 a piece. And it's uh, Alan Alexander. <coughs> Second table is going to be this big table right here. With row and uh, and her and her group. Within five years, when did the book first appear in print? It's a ten-year window. Eighteen ninety. Eighteen ninety is absolutely wrong. It was nineteen twenty-six. Put in your three dollars. Her table is going to be right over here. With Roger in his group. So today, the reason that today is winning the food day is because it's the birthday of A.A. Mill. So what year was he born within 10 years? Uh, five years on either side, 10, 10 year window. 18. Well, that's pretty daggone close, but you're not within the window. It was 1882. So you're pretty close, but uh, close doesn't get us in this game. So put in three dollars. Uh, let's see. If I've been, I've been only to this. I haven't been to this table here. I have, oh no, I got two tables. All right. So this is for uh, Jim Farmers. Uh, name three characters in the Hundred Acre Wood. Winnie the Pooh, Eeyore, and Piglet. That's right. You don't have to put it in. Today. Get to the end. Yeah. Don't put your money away. All right, John. This is uh, this is your table. Uh, actually, this book, believe it or not, made the New York Times bestseller list. What year? Five on either side. 
1930. That's a pretty good guess, except it was 1960. So, um, so yeah, so $3 a piece. All right, so I think we've been around the room. The, uh, uh, the only thing I can tell you for, um, uh, for a uh, information piece is, believe it or not, Disney actually made a film. It was called The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. It first aired March the 11th, 1977. Kind of shows you how, uh, how this book uh, really had an impact on, on the American public and, and the American uh, youth. And so there was a new character in that film, and that was Gopher. And Gopher made it very clear he was not in the woods at all. So there was only one table that didn't get fined, and so we're going to have to find a way to find it. And here's how we're going to do it. Thanks to Roger. The holiday party was at Uga de Peppa. Where was the very first Uga de Peppa restaurant? Hearing no answer, you're wrong. Miami, you're close because it starts with an M. Minneapolis. Thank you, Jerry. All right, can I get uh, Christy, Emily, and Jim Farmer to head this way? But first, we have a special announcement from. Uh, Marissa and Alicia, if they wouldn't mind coming up here too. Uh, Marissa reached out to us back in November or December. They are from Ohio State and they have a uh, interesting service project um, that they'd like us to consider. And uh, it really ties into youth services and vocational services. And so Ro and I thought it would be great to have them come out and speak to us just for a few minutes. So I will turn it over to them. Hi, so yeah, my name is Elise and Marissa, and we are students at Ohio State. We're both studying health sciences and we'll be going to occupational therapy school also at Ohio State starting this summer. Um, we met in a service learning course for our major uh, where we were able to connect with Rowan Interge Intergenerational Program, which is a nonprofit located here in Columbus that works to um, combine different generations through community outreach programs and services, focusing primarily on nutrition, education, and also arts integration. Um, the first project that we worked on with them was titled Arise, and it will actually be implemented this summer. And it connects high school students with adults of different ages um, in Kappa and through a theater program. Um, so that will be held at the Ohio Theater this um, we decided then to further our work with them to create a net debt program with them that we would like to talk to you guys about today. Um, we have connected with 4-H and um, that is the group that we would like to work with as well. And that uh, we've also created, so like they said, we created the CAP program with them, but the other program is the food and security program, which we gave you guys little flyers Maybe not everybody, but they're spread out around the room. Um, and that food insecurity program is basically just like a partnership with different organizations um, within Franklin County. And so Rowan, obviously, is the nonprofit that we're going to work with. We're going to get 4-H youth. If any of you are familiar with 4-H, it's a youth leadership organization who's trying to teach them um, leadership skills and whatever else and life skills. And then also, hopefully, um, you guys from the Rotary and the program is going to address food insecurity specifically within Franklin County. Um, the way that we'll do that is there'll be three two-hour sessions. And at each of those sessions, you're just going like, to have, have adults um, speaking with the kids and really just sharing their insight about food insecurity and just life in general. Because the purpose of growing is to just facilitate positive relationships between adults and youth and to bridge that gap. Because sometimes, Youth are intimidated by adults, but we want to bridge that gap and make sure that they know that adults are there to help them and support them. 
And so at these sessions, the first session is on your paper. Um, but the like, activities that the adults and kids will work with on together. Like one we have planned is you'll have, we'll have different foods and figure out how to make a meal out of it. And it's just also budgeting for food, especially with today's prices and learning like how to get that food and make it available to people that need it. And then the second session will be learning about food insecurity. So we'll have guest speakers come in that specialize in like healthy eating and just how to obtain um, healthy food for people that are lower income and have adults from different generations like talk with the kids about resources. And then the third session, everybody will be serving at the Mid-Ohio Food Bank. And we're really just looking for Rotary's involvement in that. And on the paper as well, there's we're looking for five to six people at each session, and it's pretty low maintenance. Like there's only going to be the three sessions, like I said before, and the dates are to be determined just based off of your guidance availability and what you think would work best for you. It would have to be evening or after school hours just because we will have youth involved. And that's pretty much all we have to say. Just overall, the program will facilitate like positive relationships between adults and youth, which is what we want to do, and also address food insecurity, which is an important issue in this country. And that's so, awesome. yeah, if you have any questions, my email's at the bottom, and you can either email me or reach, like talk to me here. That'd be great. Uh, for youth services and vocational services. So your youth services committee will work with our SLEs to figure out uh, the opportunity here and we'll be in touch. Uh, so keeping things moving, uh, who wants to run up here and make their announcement? First come, first serve. Here we go. Yeah. Hi, everyone. As I talked about last week, we have the Burger Youth Exchange weekend coming up where we're hosting the Youth Exchange students in Mount Bank outbound in our district. We'll spend some time at Coastai, and then uh, we have dinner volunteers of uh, new all Rotarians who have signed up uh, to pick them up from Coastai, take them to their home for a dinner, and then drop them off at Global Middle School, where they will spend the night with some district representatives. Um, we still need one more volunteer for the dinner host. So I will be passing around a sign up sheet for one last dinner host. Um, thank you for everyone who already agreed to help us. Um, it should be a fun weekend. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. I'll be here for a few minutes after the meeting. You can come talk to me. Thank you. So last Thursday we had our uh, Buddy Box packing event. We had 20 volunteers, and I believe we have pledged to pack 350 in under an hour. Um, we came up with 560. So again, and we'll, uh, raise your hand if you attended. I think everyone will agree it was fast, it's fun, it was rewarding. Um, we plan to have at least two of these on a regular basis every year, um, maybe even as many as four. So when the next one's scheduled, we'll let you know. Um, and then our next rah rah, uh, we're we're trying to increase the number that we have every year instead of just the fifth Wednesday of the month. Right? So uh, Wednesday, February first, will be the next one, which is only two weeks away. Uh, we're going to change up the time a little bit, um, five to seven, based on some feedback we received. And that will be at Rainbow Precision Brewing Company, which is in Landmark. Um, if you're not familiar, it's uh, on 161, just west of the railroad tracks on the south side of the road, across from JT's Pizza. And if you've never had JT's, um, you're missing out. Um, but we will try to have some appetizers and pizzas delivered from JT's to enjoy at the brewery because they do not have food there. Um, they have an assortment of beers on tap, as well as liquor, wine, and soda. So just watch your emails for further details on that. Um, it will include parking information because their lot is very small. That's all I have. Yeah, thank you.
Okay, Super Bowl and for charities in two and a half weeks. The good news is we have 10 teams signed up right now and 13 lane sponsors, but we want to get to 30 and 30, so we've got a ways to go. Everybody get out there and contact uh, charitable organizations that you know or groups of people who might be interested in a charity who like to raise money. Uh, 1,000 first, the 750 second, uh, 500 third. And with only 30 teams, you have about a 10% chance of winning and running handicap everybody's score. So all the information is on your table. Uh, please get out there and sell. Thank you. All right. And that's all the announcements. So now uh, I think we're ready for our program. Mr. John Clark, you'll come up and introduce our speakers today. Chop, chop, my father used to say that. That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, today's speaker is uh, photojournalist and fellow Rotarian Ed Zirkel, who will discuss his recent trip to Ukraine, where he sought to get a real boots on the ground experience of what was going on. A photojournalist for the past 50 years with a BFA in photography and cinema from Ohio State University, Ed has lots of experience from the streets of America. For a number of newspapers, API, UPI, and magazines. So, the photo studio serving families and clients, including Lazarus, law firms, State of Ohio, Ohio Heart of It, all, and ad agencies. From 1969 to 1971, Ed was a photographer for the U.S. Army, one of the first post photographers for. Fort Bragg, North Carolina. He had even started an online photo magazine, Exploring Ohio, which covers people, places, and events around Ohio. It's a, it is a gateway to fun in Ohio, um, day trips, food events, fairs, and festivals are just some of the stories of what to see and do in Ohio. And is also a member of the Westbridge Camera Club where he's won numerous awards for his photographic work. And that's how we found out about it. I'm a member and one of our members uh, sent a message about Ed being on television, this, um, on Channel 4, Channel 4 News. And um, I followed up and she said, you might want to ask, he's a Rotarian, you might want to ask him to be a speaker. And so we did. Is this the first Rotary Club you're trying to talk to? Talk to? Uh, the third. third. Oh. Well, you didn't have to say that. You could have said that. <laughs> but I guess, you know, is it, is it the truth? Is you know, something we ought to follow. Uh, I started in Rotary in 1991 as a member of the Whitehall Bexley Rotary Club. During that time, the club raised money for a medical mission for Operation Smile. And Ed went with the mission and documented the impact of the club's efforts and then gave talks to Rotary clubs in the club at Clements area, similar to what you're doing now. Uh, for that and other efforts, he was named Rotarian of the Year in 1997. He is currently a member of the Columbus Rotary Club. An award-winning visual storyteller, Ed is also looking for the next uh, adventure, and I suspect that that's what led him to Ukraine. Ed will tell you about his experience and the connections he made with Rotarians during his recent trip and how he documented the courage and resilience of, and daily life of Ukrainian people. You know, to return to Ukraine near the end of February, I present at Circle. I didn't tell him any of that. I didn't pay him. So I don't know where he got any of that information. Uh, full transparency. Actually, I'm not a Rotarian as, as of now. I was with um, Columbus uh, Rotary. And I uh, am in the midst of uh, getting over to Tri Village. Okay. So they had to lose you here, and then you got to go through the machinery on the other hand to get your read, whatever. And yeah. Well, Ed, just to let you know, you're on the Rotarian website, the district website, as being uh, the Columbus Club. Cl Six years from now, that'll get changed and we'll go on to whatever else. Yeah. I, I started back in uh, the late 90s at Whitehall, Bexley. Um, so those of you that know two tons of fun from there and how to find uh, properly, hey, yeah, yeah. There's some people shaking their heads. It's like if like that was all women back there, that would be a fine. If uh, you were in the newspaper and wore your pin, but it got cropped out, sorry about your luck. We don't see it. You get fined. Uh, very very creative about it. Uh, I ended up in uh, Ukraine uh, the last of. Um, 
October in the in the first uh, of November, and I'm looking to be back there the 24th for the one year anniversary. It's not exactly an anniversary, but it is a one year marker uh, in the war, and uh, so you have to get back to some things. Uh, just you're going to see a couple of videos. Uh, this particular program runs a little bit long, so I'm going to kind of abbreviate it for you. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind, uh, the Pride Village this morning was over in a church in uh, a marble clip that take and uh, supply people with uh, food and, and uh, clothing, those kinds of things. And they took me into uh, one of the parts of the church very, very nice and neatly stacked and everything's identified and so on. And I walked in there and it struck me that what we're doing here in a very clean way, they are trying to do there in Ukraine in such a way that the Russians don't know where they're at with the warehouses. Think about that for a minute. Because if they did, they blow it up because what the Rotarians are doing and other people, but I ended up finding out about what the Rotarians were doing in Lviv, Kiev, Kharkiv, and Odessa. Uh, they have warehouses. And in, in Kharkiv, in the basement of a shopping center is a uh, skating rink, a, a hockey rink. That hockey rink, and you guys know how big a hockey rink is. So from the size of this room, front to back, you had medicine, food, clothing, all kinds of items. And that one in Parhi, which is the next Russian border and about 80 miles north of where all the heavy fighting is, that particular um, warehouse that the Rotarians are running supplies 200 groups that come, pick up things, and then take it and disseminate it out to the field. Um, it, it's hard to imagine life going on more or less is normal, uh, not knowing when the next air raid giant is going to go off. But that's life right now. So I'm hoping to be in Parhi on the 24th. Parhi uh, and Lee were the first two places that the Russians came to try to, to get into the cities uh, and uh, experienced uh, leave outside. And I, I've got a video here that shows a young, young lady who lived in that house. Which I don't know if she was born there, but lived there all her life. You see behind her, the house is completely destroyed. And if you look down next to her hip, you'll see a shell that was left over. It's huge. Um, yeah. Fine. Gentlemen, we're going to be the president and past president of the hearing for the, uh, for the key uh, Rotary Group. Living in this village since uh, 1960. I'm trained they would meet me, they would take me around the city for the day. Born here. They're talking, yeah. they would show me different things. This particular setup is that yeah. one, of the, one of the first things you learn is you do never stand behind a podium. It's just not the way it works. So, uh, what the Rotarians are doing is they're, they're buying soldiers. And that's what you're going to see behind this lady is the shoulders are put on. The wife and the wife were here. The child didn't want to go to work. Um, and you can see in the back there. And he's explaining. At home with the husband and uh, her son. I uh, really broke it. Yeah. Anyway, what what they're going to talk about is the fact that um, she's been there six or seven years. Uh, 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 she was there with her husband. Uh, 
Анна Колосовська. Родина у нас дуже велика, коли активістською пішов, і сваха прийшли, і дочка була, і внучка, ми цього чоловіка не знайшли, хотіли, So when the war started in February 24th, uh, they were at home with the husband and uh, her son with them, um, came here from the situation, and her daughter her also came uh, with, and with her family, and they were uh, thinking what to do. So I have up there, there's a couple watching the burning ship. Ну і вам тоді було Ми ще хата була. Була. When they evacuated from the village on the March 3rd, uh, the house was still there. А повернулися. Ой, ми спочатку на Київ, місяць у Києві прожили вже. Ні, коли побачили, маю на увазі, що хата зруйнована. Ну, мене не допускали зразу діти, бо боялися, щоб помру, mm. О, що так до душі прийму. Ну, так. А потім те саме, вже через місяць... Ну, а діти десь... коли побачили це? Ну, син побачив у березні місяці. У березні? Да. Кім... О... Друга половина, да? Ну, да, десь так. Uh, her son saw the ruined house in the second half of March, and uh, first time um, he didn't want to say to her to not to not to damage her, her health, uh, but uh, afterwards she also saw these ruins. Mm -hmm. at, at some point in the future, just time and money, uh, there will be subtitles of all places that ran into the color uh, at the Chase Bank. They spent some time in the western Ukraine with the part of the family born and raised in Ukraine, out here, and then returned and she volunteers and goes back to the middle of the refugees, translation and stuff, came here. and probably yeah, had that. Uh, uh, so uh, some uh, subtitles on it. She called it a boy, I'm just saying, I'm not sure if it's a boy, it's a serpent. It's just, probably, a month. A month, yeah. So the modular house was installed in the middle of July, and uh, since then, and since then they live. Who is this? I was there, this is in October. No, he didn't come back. Там проблема у батька, він ногу зламав, а, О, а він сам у Києві проживає. Mm -hmm. То його відпустили. У вас четверо зараз. Так. Да. So they live four now. Uh, Anna with husband, uh, with her daughter and her granddaughter. And they added an, an addition. They added an addition to, uh, to have it uh, warm, warm enough in the winter, just to not to... Very, very nice. Can we take a look? We're going to go over what happened here? This was. Uh, no, this was part of the other. Uh, what was Like a garage or something yeah. for repair. Uh, some storage used for storage of, uh, of product for. Just so you know, no matter what you get or house in this particular village in Russia, sorry about it. Granddaughter. <laughs> Her little house. You see, granddaughter is organizing. So they go. Okay. First phase. 
can't help uh, with uh, making some <laughs> People are living in this. How many square feet? Or how many meters? Uh, uh, the square. It's six meter by two point four meter, okay. and two point eight height. Uh, six meters, twenty four feet, two point four tall. And it is heated by two ceramic panels from electricity over here and uh, another one here. А де ви кажете, це в меблях щось там? Під кроваттю. Там сирость така пошла. А чого це? Не знаю. Цікаво. Що сказати? Що носили, оце повеще рано. Що під кроваттю нічого нема. Ніякий грибок, щоб не заводився. Thank you for allowing me to see your house. Дякую за те, що дозволили побачити будинок. Sorry about the cold hands. Сожаліє, що таке стається. This morning she was also worried because it was started the alarm and you never know what can happen. Yeah, there's what eight attacks around Ukraine today. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Is there any strategic value to that city? No, no. Other than, you know, Russians were pissed because they couldn't get to eat. There's an airport just north, northwest, southeast. Anyway, there's an airport. You guys know about the, the largest airplane in the world that the Ukrainians yeah. built? Uh, that, that was up at that airport. Yeah, so they came in there and parachuted in. They were going to do all the stuff to walk into Kiev, and it just didn't go according to plan. And so they tried to fight their way in, and that didn't work either. Do you speak? Pardon? Do you speak Russian? I have a hard time with English. He asked if I speak <laughs> Russian or Ukrainian. Um, no. I, I, pardon? I will be
So I had friends just like, are you okay? Because, you know, power's out, pee, or, yeah, pee, and, and there's no water, and this and that. And I'm like, no, everything's fine here. I've got water, I've got power, I've got everything. So it's a generalization, which is one of the reasons I like being there, boots on the ground, being able to talk to people and see where I'm alive. Um, I've gone through a couple of air raid signings. I mean, when I got off the train in, in Eve, and the sirens went off, and the guy that I was with was like, well, we got to get out of here because they were closed down the station. Walked outside, and all the shops kind of closed down for a bit. We found one small coffee shop. We got uh, something to drink, a little something to eat. We got the car, took off, and went north. They go to this village. And on the way north, the sky was just crystal blue. It's a little, a little white fluffy cloud over here. And then I noticed some dark, some dark clouds. On retrospect, dark clouds. More, more likely missiles that got shot out of the sky while we were driving over. And on the side of the road, one place, I got a picture of myself someplace leaning on a Russian tank that had a B on it, not a Z. The B apparently meant Belarus and the Z meant Russia for the equipment. So, <laughs> so the attitude, uh, I was in lead, went, came back, and back in the the second time on my way out of Ukraine. And uh, the roof they gave me was the other year. I, I was nice. But Americans and travel and wanting things a certain way on that guy. And I didn't like the room. I went my old room back, which was, was just a fairly large room. It had a little tiny little balcony and stuff. And the prices were like 60 bucks a night. And I go back to change the key in the area. I don't know. And she goes, go move your room, bring the key back, and we'll go to the farm show. The siren's going off, I'm looking around and really budget. I go move myself, I go walk, stand in the balcony, I look down, you know, in fact, everything's going on. It's just life goes on. They, it's not that they don't care, it's just they don't want the Russians to have the joy of thinking that these people are running and hiding under a rock so much. They're not. The lady that showed me around in Odessa said, I'd rather be on the beach than in some basement if something happens. Yeah. You know, because we were standing next to a beach that had a big sign on that says, don't walk, don't come here and get in the water because it's mine. The Russians had mined everything on that side. And then the Ukrainians had to go out and these remines and things to make sure that the Russians could get back in the where their mines were. And 10 people, as she told me, 10 people had died. Uh, six or eight from the, from Russian mines, a couple of Ukrainian mines. But the whole thing was, people were swimming. They were out fishing, you know, doing the thing. Uh, the police come by, you know, you're not supposed to do this. And they're like, okay, the police leave, and they go do it. The police, not that they don't care, it's just that they know that these people want to go swimming, go do these things, and they're not going to stop it. Um, in Odessa, uh, number one, they drive better. They're nicer than us when we drive. There's all kinds of cars in all, in all the different cities and stuff. It's, it's, not, it's not crazy like you see in the movies. Paris, maybe, but not. Um, and, you know, restaurants are open, the food's great, the service is great, the vegetables, the, the, I mean, everything. Uh, driving to the countryside, you're going to the train of the countryside, it's like going to Ohio with cows. They're, I got to stop at a farm. People, it's like being in uh, Salinas, uh, out California, where they were doing uh, strawberries that had been laid out, but they were doing some kind of lettuce and, and potatoes or something, whatever. There was a fish market that I wanted to spend the day at, at five minutes. The fish market that was out of National Geographic, and everything hanging. Uh, all windows are taped up. The windows are boarded up. Even on the train, there's, there's uh, tape all over the windows of the train. Just in case something happens, they keep their glasses flying. It's just the way of life, the way it is. Um, there's a village. So, yeah. So, Ed, talk a little bit. Did you make connections with the Rotary Clubs in advance of your trip? How did you prepare for this trip and how did it get orchestrated? I got really lucky. Um, a couple of things on, on this. Um, I started, uh, 
I have a military background in seats where I was in the army. Um, I know there are wars around the world, but this particular thing is like World War One, World War II. This particular thing is nothing more than a land, land grab and ego trip. And whatever it is that's been in my background just was enough of an incense that I, I need to go report this. Um, I was at Fort Bragg in 6972 and not go overseas, but I ended up at CID, which is Criminal Investigation Division, photographing crime scenes. So I saw enough death and destruction in two years doing that to know that going over here was not going to be, was going to hurt. Um, I found out that the Lee Rotary Club was having its 30 year anniversary. And that all of the um, governors, past governors, future governors, and different presidents and different Rotarians were all going to gather in Lee to celebrate this. So I started writing some letters and notes and trying to figure out where and what, and trying to get international here to get me hooked up. And it took I don't know how many months of back and forth. And finally, uh, Ended up with a couple of people, just it was just a couple of people that sent some notes and said, Well, when you get to Warsaw, we'll just try to figure it out for you. So, we, uh, WUE, is the managing editor for the Rotary Magazine. We get a note from Rotary Magazine that says, By the way, he's going to be there if you guys don't fuck up. We, is from China, the little guy. And, and, and the long story short, at the end of the whole thing, we gave each other a hug. And I said, We you are a horrible pain in the ass. He goes, I know, but we got along. And uh, so I ended up doing something of a photo assignment for Rotary Magazine that you guys will get here in the next month or two. Um, but I ended up meeting him. We didn't know each other. It was just my parents on a chessboard up there moving pieces around that we end up meeting. The people in Warsaw end up taking us down to a small, a very small picturesque town where we met Rotarians from New Hampshire that have given a couple of million dollars, well, raised a couple million dollars for release stuff that were coming in out of Ukraine. We met with them, had breakfast with them, talked with them. Then another guy took us to the border the only way we got across the border quickly was the fact that we are a relief effort. So they put us to the front of the line, which still took time, and, and uh, had somebody else that met us and then drove us up to leave. And from there on out, uh, when I was in leave, I ended up meeting all these Rotarians from all over Ukraine. And the group from Cargi was fun club. Really fun club. They invited me to one night up to their apartment that they had. I went up to the apartment, so there's people all over the place, there's kids, it's all this stuff going on. And on the table sitting there is Kentucky Fried Chicken. They're like, hey, you want some chicken? And I'm like, I can't feel it. I was like, no, I don't want any chicken. The vodka you got over there that's from local? Yes, that I'll take. No, it's just nothing like a chicken. But we made really good friends, and I ended up making friends in all these different cities. They took me to all the different warehouses where they're storing stuff and putting things together so they can distribute. And um, it, it took forever for the point that one night I would just put my foot down and say, like, I am buying dinner tonight. I mean, they were buying dinner. I mean, it was just, it was Rotarian at the absolute best. And um, so, yeah, this, this whole thing is kind of this bittersweet look at uh, us just in a different country. They have meetings, Rotaract, Rotaracts are showing up and, and helping put things together. I've got one lady in, in this one thing where uh, her, her, her mom is a Rotarian, her, her daughter is a Rotaract, and she wants to be a Veterinarian, and she's working in the uh, hockey rink, uh, making sure dog food and, and cat food and everything is kept together because that's kind of out for the animals. For all these people to begin with, anyway. So it's just, you know, uh, yes, sir. You mean to say life goes on as planned? 
normal spike board PT in the TV. I saw Halloween and stuff still up on the stand. So what you see on TV is well here now I haven't been in the news business for a while. And if you have an editor and you've got only two minutes and you've got this, this, and this. I mean, when I went out for the newspaper, it's like I've got a two column wide, six inch hole. I need that filled. Go find something. So unless you're BBC, where they've indebted people, which is what I'm trying to, to, to do is, you know, and, but they're still blocked in. I, I think I, my, I'm my own editor, I'm my own producer. So I could spend as much time as I wanted to go wherever I wanted to do whatever I wanted, which is what I wanted to do, be able to actually walk the streets and be with these people and go see and do and, and listen and hear. Yeah, there's a lot of terrible things going on and, and as a, former military, I understand where and what, and had a clue before Russia even got into the country about what kind of problems Russia was going to have. Uh, and, and bottom line in what's going on is 90% of the world against Russia, China, North Korea, and maybe some Middle East. If we don't persevere here, this is going to change the way the world works. That's, that, quite frankly, is the bottom line, period. No, po no politics in involved you know? in any of this in any way, shape, or form. That's just the bottom line of what's going on. What do you mean by that? If, they, if Russia is allowed to come in and take over and we all walk away, what does that say to anybody else that wants to come into another country and do whatever they want to do? That everybody got together and stood up and have not quit at this particular point, but are actually ramping up and helping, really sends a message about other people not messing in your backyard. How many Ukraines are actually military uniforms and how many are real? I'm not sure. 30 million people approximately left, 30 million people were left, 10 left, 30 million, 30 million were left in country. And they started adding up the numbers of the Russians that were coming. And I started figuring out my head between police, uh, reserves, some other units they have, plus the regular army, and the fact that doctors and lawyers and, and bakers and candlestick makers all stood up and said, Thank you, you have one, you go. I mean, it just changed the way things, the whole aspect of what's going on. Again, this is a these people are like OSU grads but from there that have their together. And it doesn't take them very long to figure out how to take something that somebody else sent them and adapt it. Uh, and you've got, then you've got the, the Russian thing and the, and the Ukrainian thing as a counterpoint of what you're hearing news wise that is or isn't really happening. The thing about the uh, Ukrainian farmers Falling tanks off uh, field. Uh, they think one or two of those happen, but that was a big deal. So they made good use of that. And one of the factors in the front of our landline, and that was very good. But, um, but he, he, this is one of the reasons that to go there, be there, see them. Somebody else had a question. Right so, Ed, but you're not saying there's not suffering. I mean, people are dying and families are separated. They're suffering, but they're resilient. I mean, they're. No. Yeah, I've got a video in here. It's um, uh, Irina and her husband. Um, uh, the, the video basically, uh, and I didn't know this, uh, they were in the car key. They were part of the, the car key for Acarians. So she took me uh, uh, to her mother's house. And I didn't know. And so we got in the house, it's just the two of us, and she's staying in the kitchen. Sorry. She's staying in the kitchen at the end, the tears are running down her face, and she's talking about how this house is filled with noise. But her kids were there, and they were playing, and the boys there. Mom's cooking, and her husband comes and goes, and cousins, and whatever. All of a sudden, going up. we're staying in this house, you drop a pin, and it would sound like a rifle shot. Okay. Everybody had to pack up and they're in their entire part of their business. So she talked for a minute and then I walked to the house and it, it's been quiet. Walked in the house. Yeah. 
Finally, there's two pictures of the twins. Then she talks about them. She's trying to pick up some boys to pay back higher. Walks out of the room. It's the assignment. Then we go outside and we go to uh, a little shelter house in the back, uh, like a little storage shed. And she starts talking and she points and there's a hole and they have a root cellar. And that's where mom, her husband, kids, whoever else is there, all go down to this thing. And you have an air raid time. And it's not real big down there, but that's where they end up. And that's where they wait. And they may or may not have power. Yes, sir. What billions of dollars and where was the year mark? Billions of dollars that you will spend on Ukraine in terms of military power and where is it all going? I mean, if you reflect it there. Well, I, I think you start tallying up all the pieces of equipment. I mean, start thinking about just how much one round costs. Okay, how much one gun costs, how much one machine gun costs. And you multiply that over over how many people have picked up and use them and then they get damaged and then they get replaced. And then you start talking about missiles that cost more than a buck thirty five. Some of the vehicles and all the rest of the stuff. It, it doesn't take long in a you know, battle to to deplete things very quickly and, and, and stay alive and, and be able to stand up and do it again. You can have okay that right. and, and it, it, it's difficult to understand where you know money wise, you know, billions of dollars, but it's being used. No, I used to invite the boy on here, he's almost there. Where is all this in the battlefield? Right. That doesn't Deep. mean that. That, that doesn't mean that there are missiles coming because I got driven through the city and saw all kinds of damage. Uh, I, I just Steve. like I need to have for part two. Yes, sure. So, if, Ed, if people want to ask questions after the meeting or kind of sure, sure, sure yeah. yeah, okay. I feel like there's we're just scratching the surface here, but thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, oh, all right. Uh, again, thank you for our speaker. Uh, in the interest of time, we've got a raffle. How much is in the pot? Seventeen dollars. You can almost buy lunch with that. Eight eight zero three. Roger. Who makes the roll? Ah, it's fishy. Can one? No, I got Ace of Spades. Oh, Ace of Spades. Speaking of, how much in Ace of Spades? Three sixty. Eighty-eight twelve. Eighty-eight twelve. Right up here, sir. I got a nice mess of cards for you. I need your right. All of them. Oh, it's just one of those. Only those that are left. Oh, it's ours. Thanks for playing. Tradition of two weeks, uh, Ryan's be joining in the recitation of the four way test of the things we think, say, and do. First, second, third, and fourth, thank you, everybody. Thanks for your patience. Please have a great rest of your week. Turn your cell phones back on, return your badges. We are adjourned. <laughs>
Yeah. We see TV and we see damage like this. When we see TV and damage like this, a typical city, how much is destroyed? Have you seen enough to make a judgment? I mean, I saw a lot of damage in different places. I did. Um, but, you know, the percentage of where and how and what, you know, people are trying to live a normal life as much as possible and go to work and get things done. And, with I wonder the, if I could say hello to our speaker. I have a comment. Uh, can the speaker see me I'm waving my hand there? Uh, no, but I can hear you just fine, sir. Okay. Uh, Monday night, my wife and I here in Florida had the opportunity to hear the Ukrainian National Philharmonic Orchestra. And they had just arrived last Friday and did New York City, Washington, DC. And then they were yeah. down here in Fort Myers. And the uh, conductor did quite a monologue. And it, the thing that he kept saying over and over that struck me, and I can't get it out of my mind, is he kept talking about they've been a democracy for just 31 years out of a 500 year history. And that is what is keeping them and driving them to keep defending and persevering. They uh, just the short 31 year democracy that they want to hang on to. Yes, and it probably within the last four or five years that 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 started working the way it's supposed to. Um, the, uh, politically, the, they got them got their game back on. But yeah, I, for them, it's different. For the rest of the world, we've got a problem with we don't help. I wish you would have shown more of these pictures. Mm. I get in, I start getting into this thing and the questions start coming up and, and I've got, if, if nobody said a word, I've got 40 minutes of, of things. I mean, uh, this is a, a school. That's a hole left by a, a missile uh, that blew part of the roof off, took all the windows out. She's the school mistress. They showed me around. We ended up in the attic. Uh, people are working on trying to put everything back together again. The kids aren't going to go back to the school until they get to the point where they feel that it's safe, but they're starting to get the, uh, everything repaired. Um, this is um, this is in a car heave in, in a town a square. Uh, this is from the original uh, evacuation when uh, Crimea happened. This is this didn't start a year ago. This started back in '14. So for them, this has been going on for quite some time. Um, so there's all kinds of cute little notes uh, to the Russians that are left all over the place. Um, uh, the pieces the, up there are, are anti-tank uh, devices. They call them hedgehogs. Um, they, they've got going up there. Um, uh, that's Irina and her husband. Um, uh, this is down in the cellar. This, this is on the oh, way wow. to the house. That's, that's, you know, it's down in the cellar. Nice portrait of them. Um, uh, this is the rudder rack in uh, Carhi, uh, along with her buddy, and then she's working with the, the dog foods and stuff. And that's her mom. Uh, everybody, when I when you go into a train station there, uh, it, you know there are armed guards outside. And they want to see your passport. I mean, I mean they they're really trying to protect themselves. And the one night that I came up there, I had all my gear and I looked terrible because I was running on no sleep and hauling stuff around. And I walked up there and, and the guy stands there and he watches me come up and he looks at me and he just nods his head. And I go inside and the, all the gear goes through and gets, gets looked at. I go through and the, the arm goes off and um, I do this and the guy's you know doing the search, what you're supposed to do. He's like, uh, so, where are you going? I'm going to head it back to here and I'm going there and then I'm going to get back to the States. And one of the guards already goes, looks at me and goes, thank you. And you don't understand when you go that whether you're wearing something that says you're in the United States or not, you're representing the United States there. And it's a huge deal to them. Huh. Because I got done with that and I'm trying to figure out what the train is to get 
Another guard went and looked at a schedule, came back, picked up my bag, walked me to the train, which was a bit of a walk, into the train, to my compartment, set my bag down and said, thank you. I was just noticing the how fresh the eggs look. Uh, yeah. They're beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it, it, the tomatoes and everything. I mean, it was just... Um, so the man on the ground appreciates what the Americans do for them. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. What was your question? The man on the ground appreciates. Oh yeah. I, I had a bunch of um, uh, a bunch of uh, Rotarian uh, American flag pins. Mm -hmm. They're highly valued. They were like, oh my God. Um, mm -hmm. I had some other stuff. I I took a bunch of cigars uh, that I bought in Chicago or whatever, and I'm wondering a if it's if the airport would like let them go through. But I got there and at the different meetings and stuff, it's like anybody smokes a guard. And a couple of the ladies are like, I can take this to my husband. You know, I, one guy says, I don't smoke, but I want to remember this meeting. No. I mean. What did the girls doing with scissors? What are they making? So these ladies, this is all in the um, uh, ice, rink. ice rink down there. And at the end of the ice rink, there are three or four ladies down there and they're making things that they're going to take upstairs and try and sell. Oh, I mean, every little penny that they can get is a big deal. Um, so this is the, the local president uh, and he's in, in this, this district. The food, uh, they put boxes together. There are things being shipped from NATO that are healthy. It's just ongoing, completely ongoing. So is Rotary International also pumping, in addition to clubs raising money, like you said, a club raised a million dollars? They, uh, Rotary, Rotary? they are just redid their grant and, uh, and released more money that's going back to Ukraine. I don't know what the dollar so is figure is. So is it a grant to the districts? Uh, this is on, a, on an international level. They had it, it went away. They ran out of funds. They've got more funds, it's being redone. I know part of this just because I'm working with the, the magazine, which is there in Chicago. So you know, that's that's kind of what's going on with that. Uh, so so yeah, this is just a big deal. And you know, the one thing that I just it's a wonderful program, but it can't be put in as small as space. And wondrous to the history that you get together to do some type of around your It's only a price will answer. Pardon? Is this only a price will answer? So you're kidding. That's crazy. Um, I know. Because you're such a resource for this district to get an understanding of what's going on. And the other thing is just that. I'm hoping enough of these that I talk to end up being right on their door to say, yeah. well, the okay, pictures you show right now, the single pictures versus video work better. Uh, yeah, it's to be able to actually listen and see a lady standing next to her house like a long way out. And then the other videos that I have is where she's, you know, she takes us down into the bomb shelter. I got in two different places. So it, it's it's our cash 22. I'm trying to yeah. end up doing a documentary film. Right. And that's why I'm going back. Yeah. 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 But I, I will make my, at least my voice is known at the day. Yeah, don't mention that we talk. I will not. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know what the. But they're, they're the least they could do is put together a program. Uh, well, I'm also working on because uh, uh, on an international basis in okay. Australia. And so great, 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 great. Great. There. And that, that's your your simple statement around this. This is for democracy in the world. This is the battleground. So, period. Yeah. There is not and any and other. Look at the four-way test. Just take that four-way test and apply it to Ukraine. Right. That's a correct. There's no question in my mind. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? I mean, just take that and apply it uh, okay. towards that and what the back end of what's happening. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma well worth it. Thank you so much. <laughs>